Once was the size of a watermelon bean. Well, at least that is my memory. Some show me my baby bird upon the road. Oh, we we roam. I'll be howling out a song in the backseat. Tell stories that would warm my soul. Oh, her bikes and chrome. Tell me, could I wait to get home? Mercy. Fly me high on an angel's wing. Oh, mercy. everyone so today we are doing a video on this amazing family that we met at Schoolie Palooza this year and they have an amazing story that we want to share with you um, and try to get some perspectives of having some kids as well um, as pets on a bus traveling around and just kind of getting their feel for how this lifestyle is treating them and what they think about it sit in and enjoy this family is extremely special Hey everybody, we are eight people, three dogs, and a snake on a bus. All right, I'm Parker Ray, and I'm 16 years old. I am Antonia, and I'm 10 years old. I'm Lucas, and I'm 10 years old. Hi, my name is Hudson, and Devins. And he is four years old. Hi, I'm Sam, I'm 13. And my name's Matt, and I'm 40. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm Tessa. All right, so Parker, tell us what has been the hardest part about transitioning to living on a bus full time? Um, there's a lot to leave, a lot of goodbyes because of the job and school and, you know, extracurriculars and, and friends and stuff. There's a lot to leave. That was the hardest part for me. Boyfriend! Sure. Ah. <laughs> and then what would you say has been one of the funnest things? I like the people. There's a lot of different people to meet doing the same thing and in so many different ways. and you can learn from everybody so i like the people so antonia tell me what has been the hardest thing for you when it came to transitioning to this lifestyle um i think maybe well the first couple of weeks we um it was really hot and we were going to tennessee in the summer so it was um everybody was just grouchy and it wasn't like you were kind of like why did we even try and start this and because our bus cooler was broken and so it was really hot and our cooler up there um took a lot of power and so that was one of the hardest things that happened 
Okay, and what do you enjoy about traveling full time in a bus? Um, I think I like meeting new people like Parker. It's just like you get to see what their their vote is on everything and living in a bus and see what their bus looks like and see what everything that they do is like and just seeing different lifestyles and even though you're doing the same thing but you're in different lifestyles and you're you're doing it differently but in the same way have you made a lot of new friends yeah a lot of new friends <laughs> yeah awesome lucas tell us what has been hard for you um probably leaving the house and uh just changing into this new lifestyle okay do you enjoy it yeah it's pretty fun okay what do you like the most about it um there was this park there was this uh it was a like a theme park it's called dollywood out in, in tennessee and it was really fun yeah i enjoyed it a lot what is one of your favorite things to do that you've been doing some this weekend with a new friend oh, that drumming. you met drumming. you like Definitely. drumming yeah with uh stew the bus yeah Awesome. You've really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's yeah. been really and it's, fun. It's been fun for us to see. You know, we don't always see you guys. And, yeah. And Parker, we'll get to your music after a little bit. But, like, you coming over, you just glow. And we're like, hey, is Aaron here? I'm ready to play on the drums, yeah. you know? And that's mm -hmm. that's cool. That's what this, that's what's neat about this is, yeah. you know, we're all doing something different. But, but you found something that you can do on your own. It's your thing. You know what I mean? Like, you got a big family and we all do this together. But you can do that, yes. you know? And that's what's cool. Yeah, that's been something that we really wanted to, you know, focus on is um, yeah, having the kids, <laughs> having the kids um, make connections with other people who have a shared passion mm -hmm. with them and kind of finding mentors in those areas. And that has really manifested itself this week yeah. at Schooly Palooza. We found a lot of people that share passions with our kids that has just, they've been able to learn so much and make those connections with other people, which has been really cool. What about you, little man? Do you like traveling full time in a bus? Yeah. What do you like about it? Uh, donuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 the donuts. So what else do you like about living on a bus? Obviously, at four years old, it's it's totally different. And More time to play, probably. this this one here is <laughs> a is a wildcat, and and he and he likes to run, and he likes to play, and he likes to do all the things outdoors. Imagination runs yeah. wild. Yeah, and, and and it's free though. Like you know, last night me and him had a running race, and 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 doing all the things. Good but one. yeah, he did win. <laughs> he did win, and that's you know, like I think I think you're really getting to find some things out, and and just run around and get dirty and be a kid. Yeah. And, and and that's not even necessarily a societal thing anymore, you know, like, so it's it's really fun to watch you, especially how much you enjoy just letting it rip and, and run around and do whatever you want to do. And what better place to do it than yeah. everywhere. Right, yeah. right, <laughs> right. And and then if you go to the potluck, you end up with a couple of donuts and you're good to go, my man. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that you don't like about it? Uh, taking baths. Taking yeah. baths. <laughs> taking baths. Yeah. That's not much different from a regular bath. Right. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not quite as often. Yeah. 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 For sure. Get them as often as he should. Yeah. Right. Well, he's happy about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh. So, what about you, Stan? What is your? What was the hardest thing for you? Probably people. As far as what? What do you mean by people? Like, like, yeah. like your friends? Leaving your friends? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I really like to be social and stuff. And sure. <laughs> and so sometimes it can be kind of hard. Yeah. And, and in your case, you're kind of, you kind of got even another thing special. So not only do you run around in a bus with your amazing family, but what's maybe something that you have that's a little different than anything we've all seen here this week? A snake. Yeah. Okay, so you have a snake, but tell us about your room. Oh, yeah, my room's under the bus. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's just throwing you under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so what is something that you have found that you enjoy about it? Uh, 
people. So leaving people was the hardest thing, mm -hmm. and yeah. meeting people oh, is sure. the best thing. Right. That's always one of the right. sacrifices. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Something There's sacrifice of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate, but next week is going to be hard for you guys because everybody's going to go back so to your bus. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. That I don't really like because you make all these new friends, but then you just leave them. Like sure. That. Do yeah. you? Uh, keep in try to keep in contact with the friends that you meet on the road yeah is, is that pretty simple i mean not always but like we i try to get my friends like people i meet i try to get their phone number or their like social media. yeah their social media yeah I think at seven years old you're ripping around or 10 years old you guys are ripping around sw swapping instagrams and, yeah. and uh, with other families that are doing exactly yeah. what you're doing mm -hmm. you know so what has been obviously you guys went to public school before mm -hmm. well, partially partially three kids so we also have an older daughter yep. who's 18 and has moved out and graduated but um we so the older three kids went to public school until i don't know how old were you, you were in fifth grade oh, four, about four, five years three, ago yeah. i went oh. to public school in kindergarten so i've been homeschooled for okay. a while yeah so Kids are and cool. you were part time. Yeah, I did part time until we fully moved on to the bus. Yeah. So. Was that a hard transition? Definitely. I like the social aspect, and there's a lot of extracurriculars, musicals, and like teams and stuff that was hard to leave for sure. But I'm excited to go back for my senior year. Yeah. And that's that's really cool too. And like from an outside perspective, as adults, to watch you and the way you carry yourself at 16, you're mature. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, like a lot of people will say like, oh, homeschooling, they don't get the social aspect and things like that. You do very well carrying yourself. You. And I think, you know, ha being in these situations helps all of us. You know, you sure, meet new people sure. and you get new ideas and you mm -hmm. see things different ways. So it's it's really cool to see the whole family run as a unit when you guys are all together. Yeah. I have another hard thing that was sure. mm -hmm. um, hard for us to the dogs were kind of hard at the beginning because everybody was already grouchy and sure. the dogs were always just going up to the front although everybody's feet were there and they were just pushing around everybody but then once we got used to it it was like okay this is a good thing and it, when it, during those sad times they're there for us and sure they're like i wouldn't like it would be i think it would it's way easier to live on this when you have a dog or something or a pet to support you when a like you can just mm -hmm. talk to them even though they don't understand you. They understand, they're honey. They're still there. For mm -hmm. sure. So I have a question for you kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, we've only been doing this about seven months. That's a that's a good piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah and but um, so my question to you guys is <laughs> would you at this point in time with the experiences that we've had would you rather continue this lifestyle and go back to how we were living in a regular house or like give all of this up all the friends and the activities and meeting new people would you like to give that up now and go back to a regular house you know what? If or would was, you rather continue living this lifestyle if it was our old house i would tell them i think yeah. be nice to all our friends yeah yeah but like you'd stop the ditch this That's yeah the hard thing. sure i think so I would, they're both they both have good yeah. yeah yeah i think i would do both and just, just, the both world. just so them. so what you want to do is park the bus in the old driveway <laughs> <laughs> and then we're good then we can take off yeah there. so all you guys got to do is convince <laughs> boss, all you guys got to do is convince the neighbors uh -huh. to park yeah. your bus on the street yeah. <laughs> then we're good <laughs> what about what about you parker um I don't know. I definitely value some of the experiences that I've had through doing this, but there's a lot that I would want to go back to. You know, I like the fact that um, meeting new people and stuff, I, I that's good, but it brings a lot of anxiety and stuff. And um, so there's, there's positives and negatives both, but I definitely, yeah. personally, I favor a house. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What, what about, about you? Ben? I think that would be hard because... I mean, 
It depends where we're living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I like if we were living this house is really familiar, mm -hmm. and I think it's it just makes me feel more at home when I'm at something that I've been living in for a while. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in our like, old house, it was really familiar because mm -hmm. it's where I've been living my whole life besides this house. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if we went back to that house, it wouldn't be as familiar yeah, because definitely. we've been living in this house. And I, I don't know. I think I would stay in this one. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like if we got a house back in Utah, Cash Valley. It still wouldn't be the same. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah, you can change things, sure. and you can, you can um, retrace your footsteps, but you can't ever Go come back. back to the same thing, you know. And yeah. I mean, sometimes that's a good thing, but. And even if we stayed in that house, who's to say it would be the same? Sure. Yeah, that's that's sure. Sure. things exactly. always change. Yeah. Even if you, even like, if your location doesn't change, like my best things friend. always change. Sure. She, she moved away, like. Just after, we, just after we moved, she yeah. moved away, and she probably would have moved anyways. Oh sure. So that was so fun. when we we set down roots in a in a great town, and you know we had the dream house, four bedrooms, four bathrooms, historic. Um, big historic home, and right next to our best friends. Nice. Yeah, a lot of room. lot of good kids in the neighborhood, and. You know, so yeah, you you sacrifice a lot for this lifestyle. But if you but think about it, the people living in sticks and bricks homes, they're sacrificing a lot to yeah, just do that. So. For sure. Yeah. You know, so you just got to pick and choose what you sacrifice yeah, and what's yeah. best for your family. And what about you, Sam? Which way would you go? I don't know. At the moment, I would stay in the bus, but I would like to go back to where we were. Sure. I would like... Mm-hmm. Maybe stay there most of the time. Yeah. Closer. Just travel once in a while. Yeah. 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 That's what I do. Kind of like a camper then. Yeah. But like our old neighborhood kind of fell apart. Like sure. Moved, yeah. 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 Kind of weird. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, we moved. Everybody else just took off. Sure. But and you guys will find that as you go. Yeah. Like you'll get a job and your best friends are all at the job. And then, you know, this one leaves and that one leaves. And now the job's not what it was, you know? <laughs> or or you know you go to school and then that friend leaves and that friend leaves and you move yeah. on to college and you move away from your family like yeah. you know it's yeah. always kind of that you're always kind of transitioning yeah. from from one thing to the next but you guys have found just like this week you got here and it was like oh man it's a new situation i don't know nobody six days later it's like oh i got all my friends over here got all my friends you know it doesn't take long to transition sure, right? and in a couple of weeks you guys will be like man i wish we were still at school of palooza where all my friends yeah, were yeah. you know what i mean it's just kind of like a constant transition really well that's the same that's right nice. the one constant in life is change sure yeah. do you feel like this lifestyle no. once you guys picked up and moved that it has brought you closer together as a family. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. yes. Maybe too close. Yeah. No, that's a good. Yeah. That's. <laughs> All right, you guys are free to go. <laughs> yes. Tell us a little bit about why you decided to start this lifestyle. Why you decided to sell your home, pack the kids up, and hit the road. That's really a. Uh, uh, there's a lot of different answers to that question. There really wasn't one thing that led to the lifestyle. It was several different experiences that we had that um, that pushed us towards a change in our life. And I, it, it's never been that we were unhappy with the, the life we had. We actually really were happy there. Yeah. We had great jobs. Um, I was working my dream job. We had great neighbors and friends, a house we loved. Um, but we had some experiences um, losing some people that were very close to us that really woke us up to the idea of, of time and how precious that is. Um, and I think even, even before that with homeschool. Yeah, several years before that when we decided to homeschool our kids, it was kind of this awakening to this freedom on one hand, yeah, and then on the other, it was kind of this idea of, oh, we have a deliberate choice in this. What else in our lives have we not made 
a deliberate choice about what have we just let happen you or, know? or what are we doing and we're just doing it because that's what you're supposed to do right. that's what it's what everybody else like does or... and so um, there was a specific instance where you were volunteering in Sam's class and yeah. and uh, the and Sam raised his hand and it was this very applicable and intelligent um, question about the science he really that they were genuinely learning. wanted to know more yeah and the teacher when I mean, she was a great teacher she wanted to give him more she was but... a really great teacher but she said that's a great question but we just don't have time to get into it right now we've got to move on and so we realized right there that there were some things inherent about um, about that system that would kind of squelch our kids' passions mm -hmm. and our kids' curiosity for things. So we just decided to have a conversation about what it was that we even wanted for our children's education. I mean, by then our oldest was a freshman in high school and we hadn't yet had that conversation. Yeah. And... Um, we just kind of went with the flow. They were good schools. We loved, you know, the administration. We mm -hmm. loved a lot of things about our schools. Mm -hmm. But we um, hadn't sat down to say, what do we want our children's education to look like? Mm -hmm. And so when we did that, we realized that um, most of that couldn't be delivered through the public education system for our specific children and our specific list of desires. And so we pulled them out of home, out of public school and started homeschooling and um, it really opened our eyes to a lot of things and a lot of possibilities of making those deliberate choices mm -hmm. in our lives and designing our life to look the way we felt was right for us. And um, yeah, and instead of just letting life happen to us, we um, were making it happen. we were saying, hey, we have a choice in all of this. And we can make it look however we want to. And even if we want to make it look different than what is common or what is kind of accepted, then that's still okay. Mm -hmm. And and we can do that as long as it's, you know, what we feel is best for our family. And that what we feel is best for our family right now could change next year yeah. or tomorrow, you know, and yeah. that we have the right and the responsibility to to make sure we're following that, to make sure that we're in tune with our kids and in tune with how we're feeling to make sure we're doing what's right for us at the moment. You guys are religious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and obviously that will put some bumps in the road mm -hmm. as well as eight people, three dogs, yeah. a snake on a bus, uh -huh. right? And so you guys or religion or you guys do religion and how do you how have you managed to bring that with you well I mean we really believe it's it's not even necessarily what church you attend or if you attend any church it's about what values do I feel are important what do I want to raise my children to be um, not and that doesn't necessarily mean be this religion or be that but the kind of person, the kind of character they have. And um, so we felt it was really important. There were certain things in our family culture that we felt like no matter what was on the outside of our bus, you know, no matter where we were, that on the inside of our bus, that family culture stayed intact. And that obviously includes our religious um, and is driven heavily by our religious beliefs. And um, so some of those things, you know, include like our, our family study, our family prayers, um, attending church when we're able to and those kinds of things and just having really good discussions about our with our kids about character and values that we feel are right for us yeah so and honestly we come from a place where uh, everybody around us shared the same belief mm -hmm. so it was easier and, and in yeah. a lot of ways to live that way it, mm -hmm. it was but that way but yeah. that's what we're talking is like yeah. now you took it with you and that's part of what's special about you guys mm -hmm. well and i will say that i guess in some ways living around people that share the same religious beliefs is easier and yet in some ways it's harder to actually live it to live what you say you believe i feel like well, since we got on the road and we're surrounded by people that don't share our same beliefs it's really caused us to kind of look inward and make sure we're living what we believe and being, um, that's our foundation, mm -hmm. you know? And that's yeah. really made a difference. I think. And 
more importantly than even that is ex the exposure that we're able to mm -hmm. give ourselves mm -hmm. and our kids to, to other all ideas. kinds of other things, all kinds of other belief systems and realize and, and help them to realize, you know, there's these folks over here that we might not agree with a lot of their lifestyle, but they're good people. Yeah. They're just genuinely good people that just care about whoever they come in contact with and just want want to spread that love and that goodness and it and and help them to realize that that can come from a lot of different places mm -hmm. it, doesn't it doesn't just come one from way. one religion or one good is like no religion has the has the monopoly on goodness yeah. right sure. and and so to be able to expose our kids to a lot of those kind of different things. That was one of our main goals. And we um, try to make it a point too to like visit, to attend other denominations mm -hmm. too, so that our kids can get a feel for what is it that other people believe. And then I, because I, I really believe that understanding another person creates the opportunity for empathy. When mm -hmm. we understand each other more and where we're coming from and what it is that makes us the way we are, mm -hmm. then we can then empathize and love more deeply and yeah. more openly. I love it. So, yeah. so with that, um, we asked the kids some pretty direct questions mm -hmm. and it was fun to watch you guys, you know, <laughs> here, cause it's, it's probably not something you talk about all the time or whatever. And they're probably a little different telling of us course, than yeah. they were you guys. So our question for us is what has been the worst part for you? For me, hmm. Have to think about that for a minute. Sure. I I think that is what the worst part has been for me is seeing the kids struggle with the sacrifice that it's been. Sure. Um, seeing them, you know, there are times where it's it's great and we're all having a wonderful time and we really see the fruits of this lifestyle, and then there are other times where it's just hard and we miss home, and seeing them have to feel that has been hard especially because I know with every fiber of my being that we're doing the right thing for our family right now. And so to have that feel so contradictory to what they're feeling in the moment is difficult to say, I, I know you're hurting, but mm -hmm. I also know that this is, this is good. There's something to this and this is what we're supposed to be doing. And to feel like I'm like inflicting that pain on them sometimes is that's been the hardest thing for me. Sure. But I mean, isn't, don't take this the wrong way, but isn't that the job of a parent? Sure. Yeah. Right? Isn't that our jobs as parents? Is, it's not to rescue our kids from all the pain. It's to help them through it. Yeah. It's not to protect them from everything that they're going to be exposed to. It's to help them deal with it Pick when them they back are. up and dust them yeah. off and mm -hmm. send them on their exactly. way back out. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and honestly, like you said, it's our responsibility. I think it's our responsibility to allow our children to feel some pain mm -hmm. um you know it's your instinct to protect them from everything but mm -hmm. it, it's not helping them learn how to and how to, to grow and yeah to and, and to grow and learn how to do life for mm -hmm. sure you know and so i think that's a, a huge part of it is to just be able to you know um let them experience some things that are uncomfortable and realize mm -hmm. hey i can get through this sure and i can learn from this and I think can become better from it. For sure. What's been the worst part for you, Matt? The worst part for me? Taking out the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I don't, I don't know that there has been a worst part for me. Sure. Because, you know, you go through something bad, and then in hindsight, you realize the good from that bad. Mm -hmm. You realize that that thing has made me grow, has made me better, has it's taught me something. Made me reach more of my personal potential as a human being. And so I, I don't look back at it and say, oh, this stuff was so bad. I mean, there was some miserable There's stuff. Some rough spots, when our yeah. AC wasn't working, that was rough. Sure. But we got through it as a family. We got through it and we did something hard. And, and we realized it really wasn't that bad sure you know sure yeah in the moment it all just Absolutely. seems so dire and well, so like yeah it's just everything and then 
there are things in life that bring you some perspective and you realize, oh, you know, that was really hard, but I'm glad that I went through it. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that there is a s specific thing that I would say is really, really um, difficult. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of stress and anxiety about providing for my family sure. on the road and making sure that we have the money that we need to you know, buy groceries and yeah. underwear or yeah. whatever it happens to be. Yeah, you got a lot of mouths to feed. Exactly. And so, um, you know, uh, I have some anxiety about that. So that's not definitely not my favorite part sure. about being on the road. But I had those same anxieties when we were living a traditional lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. That, that didn't really. a mortgage to pay. Yeah. That, you know? yeah. yeah. Now I don't have a mortgage. Right. So that's nice. Right. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't think there's one thing that's bad, but they're they're like like Tessa said. There's there's those things that you'll still have anxiety. You'll still have um, stresses, um, but just like any family, you you figure it out. You get through it, and you become a stronger family because of it. For sure. So, what's been your favorite part? Oh, lots. Of, you, that's you hard guys. to pick. Yeah. Same. You guys. Yeah. You're right. You guys. Now we finally got him on film live. <laughs> Yeah. But no, really, the the people that it's we've the met. People. It's like we have met people that we never ever would have crossed paths with in sure. our regular lives. Sure. We would not have had the opportunity to meet so yeah. many people from so many varying walks of life. And every time we drive away from a spot where we've met someone else, it's like our family can't stop having these conversations yeah. about the goodness that we've experienced, the the kindness, the generosity, the the support from strangers. Sure. I mean, really, like, it's like suddenly when you're out of your comfort zone, you have to mm -hmm. all of a sudden st strangers to friends in five minutes and you, you don't have the luxury of time of being in your comfort zone or staying in your shell. Mm -hmm. So you just have to put yourself out there and become vulnerable. And that's when the connections are made and it's like magic, you know, sure. and just so the people are yeah. like really by far such a great part of this and, yeah. and that's really a unique thing that <clears throat> that this lifestyle can expose you to mm. where a traditional lifestyle you're kind of exposed to the same group of people over and over again you go to the same job you go to the yeah. same walmart same you go to the group. same neighborhood yep. you play at the same park you mm -hmm. go to the same church you do the same thing blah 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 yeah, yeah. but and here the same is it's different nothing. every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and so um, that's really a benefit of this lifestyle that you really can't get from a from a traditional lifestyle. It's just that exposure to just all kinds of great people, different mindsets, different skill sets, and just different passions. See, but the innate good in every single person, no matter what they're going through, no matter where they've yeah. been, but there is innate good in every person. And that's sure. just so cool to experience. Yeah. But also I think another favorite part, it has been for me anyway, as a homeschool mom has been seeing our kids' education just totally come alive, being able to walk in these places that we've studied and these, you know, experience what these people have, who've gone before us have experienced and, and being able to just make their education real. Sure. And I think that that's, probably and that's ma my main focus in our education is really not what they're actually learning so much as how much they're caring about what they're learning um, because I think that that's that's really the goal of education yep. for me is that they they care about what happened in history so that they can learn how to not repeat it or they care about you know well that was the whole goal of us homeschooling our kids was mm -hmm. um, it is we realized that they were sort of being not being taught but through the process they were learning to hate learning mm -hmm. instead of learning to love learning mm -hmm. and we wanted to change that we wanted to make sure that our kids loved to learn mm -hmm. um and i think there's a lot of parents that do that really really well even with the public school setting Absolutely. they're able to 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 instill that joy and curiosity, instill that joy and curiosity but for us, the solution for our family was to kind of just take control of all of that and be able to be able to go at whatever pace this individual child or to needs. chase those rabbit holes of interest and curiosity. Yeah. You know, when they, when they have a question, we can just chase that until it becomes a passion of theirs, 
a lifelong thing that they love. Or until it's been answered and they're ready to move on. Yeah, or until they say, okay, I'm satisfied, and they move on to something else. Sure. But then they're going to they're gonna find these things that they love, that they're so passionate about, that will be their passions for the rest of their life. Maybe careers that they'll end up loving. Or um, maybe just something that they hate. Or maybe just a hobby. That or maybe something them. that they hate. Yeah. Because yeah. they yeah. got to exactly. find that, too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah they'll, and we've done that. We've sure. chased some rabbit holes, and they're like, ooh, nope. Yeah. I'm done there. I, yeah. I don't want to go there. Perfect. And then we've chased some rabbit holes that they're still just can't get enough of, mm-hmm. and they're just they're just so Driven thirsty it, you know? to learn more about that subject. When Lucas gets near our bus for the drum set, mm-hmm. the drum set, his it's face warm. turns orange, oh, yeah. glows, just, yeah. and he just wants to like you know nonstop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That 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 actually brings me to another reason why we decided to hit the road is. We wanted our children to be able to be in touch with people that shared their passion. And if you're always going to the same place and you're always in one place, then you have a limited resource. But as soon as you start moving around, you can say, oh, we can go up there and we can meet so-and-so that shares Sam's passion in snakes. Mm -hmm. And they can meet up and he can experience that and learn from that person. And then, so we over time you end up developing this network in all of their different passions. So we come here to Schooly Palooza and Aaron over at Stu the Bus has his suitcase drum set and he sets it up and Lucas just loves, he has a drum set but obviously we can't fit his whole drum set on here. Apparently we'll be building a suitcase drum <laughs> <Yes>. set. <laughs> <I'm assuming so. laughs> but he's met somebody who shares his passion and Aaron loves it so much that he just wants to teach. Whatever he knows, he's just willing to share. And as a parent, to run across people that love things so much that they just want to, give. want to teach your children the things that they love, you know, because I'm, I'm not a drummer. Sure. I can't, I can't teach them what Aaron can. Sure. But because we're on the road and because other people are on the road that share his passions, he can make those He can grow that passion and and have it become something very, very special that lasts a lifetime. And yeah. I think those mentors that they meet along the way will become, you know, even if they don't necessarily stay in, like, really good contact, those are the people that are help, helping shape who they are and yep. shape their yeah. future. That's, They'll that's never, a really cool thing. No matter if you guys decide to turn around tomorrow and head right. back. The kids right. that are with you right now will never forget the yeah. situations that no. they've been put in. Absolutely. And no kids have experienced what you have yeah. helped them experience. Yeah. yeah. Another reason why we decided to live this lifestyle. Yeah. Tessa mentioned um, we lost, we had some hard losses. Sure. Um, some close people to us. Um, our niece um, died unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of shocked our whole family. And when something like that happens, you realize, you know, it gives you that perspective and you say, am I making the most out of the time with my kids? And, um, and then shortly after that, um, we had a really good friend of ours that that we really looked up to that, um, died, um, from brain cancer. Um, and and he was you know he was a, he was such a good good man. Leaving five young daughters and a mm-hmm. wife. And yeah, and um, and so we looked at that too, and we said, "Whoa!" You so just don't so know. so we had on yeah. one side we had this young child who died, and and we said, "Who knows how long we have left with our own kids?" And then on the other side we had this parent who had passed away. And again, we said, who knows how long we have here. Mm-hmm. Or with our parents. Sure. Or with yeah. our parents. Sure. And we have spent more time with our, even our extended family, mm-hmm. this last seven months, than we have in years. Yeah. yeah. And that's been such a gift, you know, just, it's been an immense gift to mm-hmm. be able to spend so much time. And my mom, um, so we, we made this decision. We ended up selling our house. We closed on our house and my parents had graciously invited us to come and live in their apartment and build the bus there so that we could work on it full time and not have to pay rent. 
Um, so we did that, and um, yeah, it's so generous. We were so we were so like. Honestly, you know, the stars aligned. The universe yeah. wanted us. Bus fell into our laps the week before we closed the house. It was just kind of all these things that reassured, like, this is the right path. Sure. So yeah. we kept going. We lived, um, you know, right next to my parents for three and a half months. And um, and we got to spend a lot of time yeah. with because her we parents. Because we had lived four hours away from them. So we didn't see them a lot. So we got that everyday contact, you know? Sure. And then um, my mom passed away this September. Mm. And I just think if if nothing else comes of this, that was worth it. My kids forged this relationship with her that was a gift, you know? And, um, and so those kinds of things just teach you that time is just so precious. And um, the seven months has been precious. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, but don't let anybody fool you. <laughs> the first few weeks on the road are hard. Oh, so hard. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> they are hard. Because, like, anytime you you hit something new or you try something new, new job, new, you know, move to a new town, you just, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And then, so getting on the road, um, you know, for the first three, four weeks, just Tessa like and I would would kind of lock eyes and be like, I don't what, know. What have we what done? What have we done? This is just a huge mistake, <laughs> yeah. and we just sold everything we own. Uh, and, uh, and, but at the same time, we had to make it work. And I'm so glad that we. I'm so glad we didn't have like a house that we could just. Yeah, we didn't have something to fall back on. Yeah, because we probably would have just thing. given it up and been like, yep. <laughs> just All right, kidding. Yeah. There's other people who want to do this. Let's just you know sell them our bus and and go back yeah, to what we were doing okay. because it was just it was just difficult it was it was really difficult and um but it was one of those hard things that we got through as a family and we learned how to do different things and we learned how to deal you know with the messy toilet we and learned how to get by each other in the hallway without being grumpy you know just yeah, those yeah. little things we learned that... how to be patient you know if you're if you're if you're walking down the bus and somebody has a drawer open and, you know, you just have to wait for a few seconds. But now I... we have the time to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? We have, our lives aren't so rushed that we have to get back to the back bedroom. You know what I mean? It's just, we can. Yeah. We're tradition. We yeah. To be... where, where the traditional kind of lifestyle felt like. Oh, oh yeah. Mommy. Felt like you didn't have that time. You're just so busy getting kids to, so to ballet and to soccer and to baseball and to play practice and to, you know, a million other things. It was just go, 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 go. Um, and, and now this lifestyle has really given us some, some time that me, even me and Tessa, just so that we can practice being patient mm -hmm. and understand that like, Hey, everything doesn't have to happen right now. Yeah. There's wait. not that immediate gratification. I feel like this lifestyle really is, it's not convenient. Like, and you don't even, you don't even realize what conveniences yeah. you have in regular life. And then you get into this lifestyle and you realize, well, everything is so inconvenient. Everything takes longer. The internet is longer, like whatever it is, you know, you have to move things to get to something or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And realizing that inconvenience is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. like we, it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's in fact, I think now more than ever, it's good to be uncomfortable. It's good to yeah. be inconvenienced because that's when we see ourselves grow as humans. Yeah. Learn so. to grow the most. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, our, our kids realize that too. And when we were living in a, a regular house, it was, you know, the kids, the kids would still get bored. Sure. Mm -hmm. But there were just like, you know, th there were, there were, you know, just the traditional things to entertain them. And now our kids will come up to us and they'll say, hey, we're bored. And we'll say, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's great. Boredom's a fantastic thing for you mm -hmm. because it makes you be creative. It makes you go experience something new, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, you know, it's been it's been really good. Yeah. I think that there's nothing that that has happened to us that. I, w I would change, I don't think. No. Other than meeting right. us. You definitely lied about <laughs> right, that. Right, right. No <laughs> way. No way. 
<laughs> We've loved every minute. Yeah. No, it's people. So, and that's what I'm saying. It's meeting different people from different walks of life. You know, that that, that have just have different histories. They've had different experiences. And will be a part of who we are. And you guys will forever, have, you yeah. Know? And you guys will have no idea how much you have helped us as parents. Yeah. The impact, like that. The impact that you guys have on our kids is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, teenagers are hard. Mm -hmm. But when they meet somebody like you guys and they make a connection and they say, those people are speaking my language. And even though... Like, oh, we have help in this. You know, we have this. Yeah, even though it might be the same thing that they've heard from a million different adults, for whatever reason, your experience has given you the ability to connect with our kids and and like like there's no way for us to repay you yeah that's been a gift because to us, it's so it's you. such a gift to us you guys are making me teary <laughs> <laughs> come on <laughs> we talk a lot too so it's gonna be a long video yeah, it's, it's good though it yeah. is good so do you have anything i would say um <clears throat> as parents a couple living in a tighter space mm -hmm. your privacy how do you feel with your privacy and having the kids so like within close quarters right, yeah obviously There's, yeah obviously intimacy yeah you know not only I mean, one thing but intimacy and privacy is yeah. is is at a million dollar cost yeah it right. really is yep. there's not a lot of that there is not a lot of but, that but when it comes down to it we can just kind of kick the kids outside and and say, you know what, we need you guys to... We're gonna do some cleaning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> whatever. Right. Um, and um, honestly, you know, just uh, having a, a, a separate bedroom, like, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of buses out here that like, the parent, or the kids have bunks, but the parents have a couch that folds into a, mm -hmm. a bed, and that's what they sleep on. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, it was really important to, to build in kind of some privacy mm -hmm. so we made sure we had our own room with a door that closes mm -hmm. so that you know if we need to have a meeting right you know if we need to talk about you know the the kids but we don't or we need to talk about plans mm -hmm. that we don't want the kids to know about mm -hmm. or if we need to have a meeting mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Do, do so, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and you guys <laughs> you have quite a it, bit of a space between their rooms yeah. and your room. That, that was intentional, intentional sure. to put the and back great. areas between the bunks and the bedroom just to create. But all of that being said, there's only so much you can do for mm -hmm. privacy. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I will also say that we're very open with our kids. Mm -hmm. yep. Like we talk to them about everything. We want them to know that they can ask us about anything mm -hmm. that um, those kind of conversations are always on the table no matter your yep. age and your level of understanding. And so um, so we try to portray that to them as a beautiful thing mm -hmm. that is yep. shared between people who love each other and that it is natural and normal and not strange or weird. You know, yeah. I mean, it's always sure. weird if sure. you know what your parents are doing, yeah. sure. but, um, but, but the, how lucky are they the that their parents love each other? Sure. You know, like, so that's kind of how we portray sure. it and I how like we that. talk to them about it. Sure. So. Yeah. And, and everything is on the table. <clears throat> Right. All the all the things that a lot of society is like, oh, that's, you know, that's weird. Or that's taboo, awkward. You don't talk to your parents about that. And yeah. I'm sure, of course, there are things that they don't want to share with us. Their kids, sure. you know what yeah. I mean? Sure. Like, but, but if uh, but if if we at least put it on the table, then they know they can talk to us. Yeah. about sure. it. They know it's an option if they need it. You know, yeah. and and there was. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter if you're if you're talking to your kids about sex or if you're talking to your kids about um you know, money, menstrual politics, cycles, or, yeah. yeah, doesn't matter what it because is, whatever. it's life, yeah. and you have to learn how to get through it. Pretending it doesn't exist or or making it super awkward, awkward yeah, is yeah. just not a not kind of a, a healthy outlook, I don't think. And so we've kind of put it all on the table, and and our kids know that they can come to us and talk to us and ask questions, sure, because um, I'd much rather them learn it from me than from you know who knows friends or books or sure. movies or whatever just else trying to it is. keep that open dialogue yeah, yeah. right so. yeah i love it yeah so if you guys had anything to say to 
it's another family or a couple or a individual mm -hmm. about this lifestyle or the last what what would your kind of like closing like like what would be your your thoughts or your or your I, I think, think oh, sorry. no go ahead I, I, I they're probably going to say thing. the same thing ladies first I would say just get out of your own way um most of the time what's holding us back from our dreams is putting our own restrictions or boundaries or whatever on it and um really anything is possible whether it's traveling full-time or or opening a bed and breakfast or whatever it is that you feel called to do or drawn to do um that's probably for a reason so what is it that you have to change and change it because really that's in your control you have the choice mm -hmm. you have the ability and it's not going to be easy it's not going to be quick it's going to be a long hard process but if that's what you're called to do make it happen like i just yeah and i think connected to that or very in addendum to that i would say the message here is to be intentional yeah absolutely and this the life we've chosen has both allowed us and forced us to be intentional, which is fantastic. Cause then life is not just happening to us. It's not just, you know, whatever comes our way, we'll deal with. It's, we have a, an intentionality to our life. We've chosen this. And when things go bad, we, we remember, okay, we chose this. <laughs> we chose this and everything, everything that comes with it. Yeah. Um, but it was our choice. It wasn't yeah, just. It wasn't forced upon us. It wasn't. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think you have to live this lifestyle to be intentional. Absolutely. No way. I think anybody can be more intentional in their life, but I think very few people are. And we certainly weren't. We, we aren't still. We're, I mean, that's still something you're developing, you yeah. know, but, um, but just making an effort and having that awareness of being intentional and making those choices deliberately yep. to shape your own life and to shape your own character. I think is yeah. kind of the key. Right? Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's so much still to figure out, you yeah. know, it's not we're like constantly learning and growing. And yeah. And, and that's part of what I love is that we're intentionally learning and growing now instead of just Go reacting to what life has given us. Do you and that's, yeah. Like the kids mentioned earlier, yeah. we talk a lot about being proactive with our lives mm -hmm. instead of just reacting to what the world throws at us, you know, yeah. so. Have fun, be good, learn lots. I love it. Parker, you're 16. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how difficult that can be being a 16 year old girl in a bus yeah. with all of your family and not having a lot of space for privacy. That's hard. Um, it's a lot to leave when you first go from my house like I left and sold the house that I grew up in and I left my job and I left my school and my friends and my boyfriend and all that and so it, it's a lot to go from being able to um, go off and do things on your own all the time be busy and then come and have all that time with your family all the time and um, not have the space for a break mm -hmm. and so um it's different. It's very different. It's difficult <laughs> sometimes. And sometimes we fight more and sometimes we fight less. It's, it's rough, but yeah. What have you found to help you get through that? Um, I was a dancer before I left my hometown and so, but I can't really do that in a bus. And that was kind of my outlet before, but um, now it's kind of more music writing and songwriting with my ukulele and stuff. So I turn towards that, you know, poetry and stuff like that. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about your songwriting and your, your, what you do with the ukulele and, and, and how you came into that and, and things like that. I was watching, or my, my grandpa sent me a video of a girl on like America's Got Talent or something. She was playing the ukulele and so I was like, okay, I gotta get one of those, you know. So my birthday I got a ukulele and um, I've always kind of been like a music person. Music is a big part of my family's lives. Like, we don't all play instruments and we don't all sing and do that, but um, we always have a song on. We're always dancing in the kitchen. Like that's just the type of family we are. And so um, me being in, in that family, um, 
music is huge. Music is a huge part of my life, and I don't know where I would be without that, you know? And so um, it's such a big e expression that I've kind of taken on. And um, so I, I got a ukulele for my birthday, and I just kind of started writing and, you know, learning and singing and um, and just kind of kept going with it. And, and so whenever, like, inspiration strikes, it just kind of happens. So. Sure. And Tanya and I have had the pleasure of being around you for the last week and listening to you and, and watching you as a young woman and, and, and your maturity and things like that. Um, obviously, we all think that your music is going to go somewhere. Um, <laughs> I hope so. Where would somewhere be if somebody wanted to find you? How could they find you personally? Not um, not eight people, three dogs and a snake. Yeah, yeah. where where yeah. could people find you? On Instagram. Uh, as what? Yeah, at Parker Ray Jams. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we'll put that in there so that cool. you know people can yeah, awesome. find you, because I think you're gonna probably end up somewhere. I hope so. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So. And you write a lot of your own songs? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got notebooks and notebooks ahead to kind of leave some behind <laughs> sure. as a room on the bus, but Sure. Yeah. How many songs would you say that you've written? Um, probably like 20, 25. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, because I've probably heard you play yeah. 10 songs this week Yeah. and I would say the majority of them are something that you wrote or mm -hmm. you know it's it's really been special I put a lot of those in in notebooks or in the notes in my phone yeah so when that broke they're like <laughs> left behind but, sure you know, sure that would have been rough yeah yes. I'm yeah. sure somebody can get the files off of it oh yeah yeah mm. my Apple ID nice so what is some advice that you would give somebody who is around the same age as you, mm -hmm. who maybe their family would be wanting to start this type of lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. You know, going from being a teenage girl to leaving everything behind, friends, yeah. the little bit of privacy that you used to <laughs> once have, and um, starting this lifestyle. Um, take care of yourself. It's easy, so easy to slip into depression and anxiety and all that. And I went through a big, like, period when we were building the bus where I just I didn't want to be there mm -hmm. and I didn't want to live anymore and I just want to be done and um, that's hard that's really hard because you want to support their idea you want to support um, what your parents want and, and you want to understand you want to be able to understand that they want what's best for you but um, that's hard to do when it's not what you want for yourself and so take care of yourself mentally emotionally spiritually physically all the above you know just even in days that you don't want to get up get up and try again because it'll be okay in the end you know? so just keep going <laughs>